The Compass Card is a contactless smart card payment system primarily used for public transit in Metro Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It is operated by TransLink. Riders purchase a Compass Card and add fair value online, by phone, or at vending machines located at Cebus terminals, SkyTrain and West Coast Express stations. Vending machines are also available at 18 participating London Drugs retail store locations. Compass cards were deployed in August 2015. Full deployment for the general public took place on November 2, 2015. Since April 4, 2016, Compass cards and tickets have been required for all trips taken on the SkyTrain, Cebus, and West Coast Express. In June 2016, TransLink reported that 100% of monthly pass users and 95% of all other users have switched over to the new format, totaling more than 915,000 customers. Overview Users start by obtaining a Compass card from one of the vending machines located at SkyTrain, Cebus, or West Coast Express stations, then add value to the card online, by phone, or directly at the vending machines. In late October 2015, cards became available from Compass vending machines at London Drugs stores. A card can be purchased at the customer service counter in any of these stores. Compass cards are also available for purchase wherever previous forms of transit fare media were available. The current stored value for a card is available by submitting the Compass card number at the Compass card website. These pages are not adapted to mobile device access and are not linked from the TransLink website. The Compass card number is not machine-readable and must be submitted manually. If the user logs in, a history of usage and stored value can be viewed. Once users obtain a Compass card with an adequate pass or an amount of stored value, they can tap in to enter a bus or transit station and tap out as they leave except for buses. Tapping involves lightly touching the Compass card flat against a card reader. Depending on the type of transit mode and vehicle the tap process differs slightly, Bus riders tap card readers located at each bus door. Users are not required to tap out on a bus. SkyTrain and Cebus riders tap fare gates located at each entry and exit point of the station. West Coast Express riders tap a freestanding validation machine located at each entry and exit point of the station. When a rider starts their trip by tapping in at SkyTrain or Cebus, the system will automatically reserve enough fare for three zones. Tapping out at the end of a trip will ensure that riders are only charged the fare for the distance in zones traveled. Failing to tap out at the end of the trip may result in a rider being charged a full three-zone fare even if only traveling one or two zones. If the trip is started from a bus, the system will only deduct fare for one zone. As riders transfer between transit modes or vehicles, such as when exiting a bus and entering a SkyTrain station, they must tap out and then tap back in. The system will automatically track transfers, ensuring riders are only charged once provided they are within the 90-minute transfer period 180 minutes for West Coast Express and within the same transit zone. TransLink estimated that 80,000 users were using the system by the end of January 2014. As of June 2016, Compass cards had been tapped on the system more than 371 million times, at a rate of more than 1.5 million every weekday. 
TransLink recorded a ridership increase of 1.8% and 3.2% in increased fare revenues in 2015, according to its 2015 annual report. Fares <laughs> <laughs> Transit riders will have the option of paying for fares by Compass Card or cash, but the Compass Card offers lower fares. A rider who makes a cash payment at a Compass vending machine receives a paper-based Compass ticket which is good for transfers within the 90-minute transfer period 180 minutes for West Coast Express. Nearly half of TransLink's revenues come from fares. TransLink uses a three-zone fare system in the region for SkyTrain, Canada Line, West Coast Express and Cebus service, with single adult fares ranging from $2.85 to $5.60 on weekdays. All fares on buses across the region are set at the one zone rate of $2.85, a switch TransLink made during the roll out of the Compass contactless smart card payment system. Users purchase a Compass card for a $6 refundable deposit, then load it with stored value. The $6 deposit can be used temporarily if a rider forgets to maintain enough stored value, but the value on the card must be replenished above $6 before the next trip or they will not be able to tap in. There are 10 varieties of cards Light blue, adult Orange, concession children and seniors White, CNIB Yellow – Contractors Dark Blue – TransLink employees Magenta Red – Personalized program passes such as BC Bus Pass program clients low-income seniors and individuals receiving disability assistance from the province of British Columbia Access Transit – Handy Card Green 2016 Commemorative Limited Edition, for the opening of the Evergreen Extension. White with Canada 150 Emblem 2017 Commemorative Limited Edition, in celebration of the 150th anniversary of Canada. Dark Blue with Poppy Illustration 2018 Remembrance Day Commemorative Limited Edition Adult Card in honor of Canadian veterans and the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I Photo of Poppy Field at Sunset 2018 Remembrance Day Commemorative Limited Edition Concession Card in honor of Canadian veterans and the 100th anniversary of the end of World War If a paper-based compass ticket are grey in color with blue text adult or orange text concession. Because of the smart card circuitry laminate between the paper, it is not recyclable. TransLink began testing wristbands with a compass chip during late 2018. They are planned for launch in December 2018. Topic: <laughs> Stored value. The following tables illustrate single trip fares during peak and off peak hours for bus, Cebus, and Skytrain riders. Users must maintain a minimum of one cent value on the card to tap into buses, Skytrain, or Cebus, and a minimum of $4.50 to tap into West Coast Express. Topic: Other passes. Day passes, U passes, and one, two, or three zone monthly passes can be loaded directly onto the Compass card, with the option to renew automatically every month. Users who register online benefit from the auto renewal and balance protection, which protects the stored value in the event of card loss or theft. Passes are used prior to stored value being used. Topic: 
Topic: History. SkyTrain and Cebus were barrier-free at their inception. BC Transit, and later TransLink, took the position that the barrier-free proof-of-payment system was more effective than having fare gates or turnstiles. In the early 2000s, they estimated a 5% fare evasion rate on SkyTrain, or approximately $2 million or less per year. Fare checks and fines issued inside fare paid zones kept the rates at that level. Since the staff conducting the checks, SkyTrain attendants and transit police, would still be required even with physical fare barriers, maintaining a barrier fare system would be more costly than the barrier free option. In late 2007, the Provincial Minister of Transportation, Kevin Falcon, announced interest in the installation of an access controlled fare system. In March 2008, Ken Dobell, a lobbyist for Cubic Corporation, started talks with Minister Falcon with the intention of selling technology to TransLink. Dobell, B.C. Premier Gordon Campbell's former deputy minister, had just been found guilty of breaching the Lobbyists' Registration Act. In April 2009, the Office of the Premier, the Government of Canada, and TransLink announced the implementation of fare gates and smart cards. The $194 million system was rolled out in November 2015 to save $2 million a year in fare evasion. Wristbands TransLink rolled out Compass wristbands on December 3, 2018. These wristbands function the same as compass cards. Initially 1,000 blue adult wristbands and 1,000 orange concession wristbands were made available to the public, they sold out in two hours. The next batch is expected to arrive in February 2019. <laughs> Issues and controversies Accessibility Even on buses, users with physical handicaps may have difficulty tapping their card, this is even more apparent when they are faced with fare gates, which can completely prevent their access bus drivers can waive the fare should they choose. The temporary solution was either having transit staff on hand to assist riders with difficulties, or keeping at least one fare gate per station open when staff was not present, but they eventually closed all fare gates on July 25, 2016 and require those with disabilities which prevent them from using fare gates to contact TransLink personnel for assistance. Topic. Transfers from buses Buses still issue paper transfers with magnetic stripes, which are incompatible with the compass system, requiring passengers to purchase additional compass tickets in order to transfer to SkyTrain or Cebus. TransLink claimed it would cost an additional $25 million to provide fare box upgrades on buses, enabling them to dispense and accept compass tickets. In the original full tap in, tap out design, a multi zone bus trip could be completed for a single zone fare by tapping out within the first zone of travel but remaining on the bus. This fault was not publicly acknowledged by the administration until system testing in September 2013. Regardless of the loophole, transit police or designated transit security fare enforcement offices may issue a $173 fine if they catch riders without adequate fare in a fare paid zone. 
Furthermore, the tapping out process on buses was reported to be slow, and failure to record a passenger's tapping out may have resulted in the passenger being charged for traveling through three zones when in fact they only traveled through one or two zones. On October 5, 2015, all bus travel throughout TransLink's system became one zone travel, and bus passengers are neither required nor expected to tap out. Topic. Delay in deployment and cost overrun Despite a planned rollout in 2013, the full implementation of the system continues to be delayed by ongoing problems related to the bus tapping. This has been a serious setback for TransLink as the entire system had been supposed to be operational by 2013. The time frame announcement was pushed to late 2014, before TransLink changed its Compass Timeline website in late 2014 to remove statements promising a full Compass rollout in late 2014, only stating that post-secondary students will receive cards in the summer of 2015, replacing the U-Pass BC, with full deployment not re-announced until September 2015. In addition, TransLink confirmed in October 2013 that the cost overrun for the Compass card system had reached $23 million due to delay-related inflation and unanticipated scope creep. The Compass card system had been budgeted at $171 million, but had risen to $194 million.